Hello and welcome into my attic. As you can see from the thumbnail, I made myself a boho style ottoman or puff. And as I mentioned, I really cheated big time in making it. So let me just show you what I did. And let me tell you that any of you can make this as well. So let's begin. So I started off with a normal cardboard box, nothing special. Uh, it was almost an exact square cube. Mine is 12 inches high because I wanted to make a footrest. So if you want to make a footrest, I wouldn't go any higher than 12 inches because it could result in being a little bit uncomfortable if your legs are too high up. The first thing I needed to do was fill up my box. So I saved up all my water bottles and I took one water bottle and I cut off the top to leave a wide opening so I could insert another water bottle inside. And then I sellotaped uh, around both of them to you know, make it even sturdier. I'm showing you here with small water bottles, but I actually use big water bottles, the one and a half litre ones. Um, I have three rows of three, so that's 18 bottles in total because there's two bottles to each column. So that makes a total of 18 bottles. Um, it didn't take us long to save them up because, you know, it's summertime and drink a lot of water. But I didn't film it because I didn't have a YouTube channel then. And it was quite a while ago, actually. And it's been in the cupboard ever since this box, um, waiting to be covered. But I didn't know how to cover it until now. So I got it out again now. And I'm going to show you how to cover it now. Yes, by the way, if you have gaps inside the box, just stuff it with newspaper until you make it nice and compact. So on the top of my box, I have a gap that needs to be filled in. So with this cereal box, I'm just going to fold it up a couple of times, sellotape it to make it into a kind of a sturdy stick so that I can fill up the hole on top of my box. I'm just going to glue it on and secure it down with masking tape. I've also sealed all the gaps around the box with masking tape as well. Okay, so you can't um, create a masterpiece if you don't have a good canvas, a good base. So that is what I'm going to prepare now by mod podging a single layer napkin all over my box and then I'm going to wait for it to completely dry before I carry on. So now everything's dry, I'm ready to paint my box. I chose a beige colour, but white would be great as well. Um, and then wait for it all to dry completely again. Okay, so now the paint is all completely dry, we are now ready to give our poof that boho touch. So for this DIY, there are two big secrets. And the first secret, and they're both really simple secrets, but the first secret is this um, gummy plastic uh, runner table mat, or you know, the stuff you put into drawers or into cupboards, fridges, things like that. This is what is going to give us our weave design when decorating the box I found it easier to do one side at a time and I started on the top so unbelievably my uh, plastic table runner was exactly the same width as my box so that was lucky I didn't have to worry about that measurement but just I just worried about the length and um, I just cut it a little bit longer than what I needed you know just to be on the safe side um, yeah 
Um, you're going to need as well a sheet of plastic. You can use a bin liner, you can use the plastic uh, from a cereal box. Um, that's what I'm using. For, uh, this is to protect your table and um, it's for our work to stick on to. So you definitely need something like that. Okay, so now we have our plastic sheet in place with our cutout um, runner on top and now we are ready for our second secret ingredient. Here is our second secret ingredient, napkins. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you already guessed that. Oh. Okay, so for this project, you'll need around four to five napkins to cover a pulf of the dimensions that I'm using. I myself actually used eight napkins because I wanted to use eight different colors, but you really only need four to five napkins to cover the whole pulf. In fact, I had a lot left over. If you want to use, say, just two colors, then you'll need about two to three of each of the colors and that will be enough. A good way to decide on which colors to use is to simply place them next to each other like this and decide on whether they look good together or not. Also, I'd advise you to use the cheap dimply napkins rather than the smooth napkins that have the patterned edging because I found they were so much easier to stick down and absorb the glue. Also, because I didn't separate the napkins in the usual way, I wanted to keep them intact and as thick as possible so that the weave pattern would take a lot better and be more noticeable and that actually worked. So what we're actually doing here is cutting strips of napkin, gluing them onto the plastic mat, putting it out to dry, it doesn't take that long in the sun, and then when it's all dry, we'll peel everything away and we are left with our napkin with, um, it's like it's been in a, in a stamp, you know, it has the indentation of the weave pattern, but we don't need to keep the uh, plastic mat stuck to the napkin. It all comes away. Okay, so before we do all that, we need to cut all the strips. Um, it's, it's quite quick and easy really to do that. We just need to fold the napkin once, twice, three times, and then cut, I cut like a centimeter strip, a centimeter and a half. It's up to you how thick you want your strips. Um, obviously, the, the, the thicker the strips, the least you have to cut, but it doesn't take long to cut the strips at all. Um, and that's it, you just cut all the strips, you do it to all the napkins, and then when we've done all that, we can start sticking them down with Mod Podge or glue and water, whichever you prefer. Okay, so everything's ready. We'll need our Mod Podge or our PVA glue with water and a little straight PVA glue as well. Um, this isn't, you know, really necessary, but it's just something extra. I thought it might help just stiffen up the napkin just a little bit more, but you know, if you haven't got any PVA glue, don't worry about it. So now you're gonna brush on a strip of Mod Podge and a little bit of the glue as well. Um, now when you do this, try and keep the um, plastic mat as dry as possible. Obviously you want to put the glue down, but don't drench it. You want to keep it as dry as you possibly can because uh, if you put too much uh, liquid, um, the weave pattern won't take, uh, it will just all get up into a mushy mess. Um, so you need to really try and keep it as dry as possible, if that makes sense. Thank you. 
also when you put on the next strip of napkin you need to um, overlap the previous napkin so that they join together just a little bit that way when we strip off the whole thing it will come out in one piece rather than tiny lots of tiny little strips Okay, so I'm going to carry on and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so now it's all glued down, I'm going to pick up the whole lot, take it outside and hang it up on the clothesline. Um, now, I'm going to leave it there to dry for about half an hour, then I'm going to go and check on it, and hopefully um, I'll be able to just pull away the plastic sheet. If it's completely dry, it'll just pull away very, very easily. As far as the plastic mat and the napkin is concerned, that I'm going to have to leave outside for another hour or two. Um, it is very hot here where I am, so it will dry quite quickly. But, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry, because if we pull away the napkin from the mat when it's still damp or not quite dry, then it will just all get ruined. It has to be completely dry. Okay, so to be on the safe side, I left the mat and the napkin outside to dry for another couple of hours. But now it's all completely dry, we can go on to the next stage. Okay, so there's one more thing I have to do before I separate the napkin from the mat. And that is to rub over a brown wax crayon. The reason I'm going to do that, it's kind of like dry brushing when you use paint uh, it just highlights the texture it highlights the weaved pattern um, and it makes it look a little bit more like fabric so while I'm rubbing the brown crown over the napkin it's very important that I leave it stuck to the mat because if I take the mat away then when I rub the crown over the napkin it will flatten out the pattern it will get rid of the weave but if we leave the mat on then we're going to get an even better weave um, pattern on our napkin so now that's done we can finally gently pull away our napkin from the mat So here's a close-up of the weave pattern after using the crown. I'm cutting off the unwanted excess of napkin. I'm not cutting right on the weave pattern but about half a centimetre away. So here it is ready to glue onto the box. So here's my box, and if you're thinking that it should be beige, then you're right. What you're seeing here is how I covered the puff before I discovered the napkin version. Basically, for this DIY, 
I had to do lots of experimenting before I finally decided on the napkin version because as you can see from this image my previous experiments didn't work out at all but I persevered in my experimentations and finally got the look I needed. Yeah, so I did loads of versions, but this version here I did with a one white napkin and I coloured in the stripes with crayons and as you can see it didn't work out at all, but luckily I found the way in the end. So with that being said, let's carry on. First I'm brushing on my wood glue and water mixture, or you can use Mod Podge. Spread it out well and as before, don't drench the box put on as little as possible and then after that immediately put on some straight glue like PVA glue and spread that around as well and try and get the box as sticky as possible but at the same time keeping it dry if you get my meaning. Don't forget to do the edges well as well. Press down well with your fingers all around and on top and that is the first layer done. So I did this again for all the four sides and stuck them on one by one. I didn't do the base but you could glue on some felt or some adhesives to stop the puff from moving about. I might even try a square kitchen sponge, I think that might work well. Here I'm gluing on the second piece. Here's how it looks finished without the trimmings. So for the trimmings, I just added some burlap ribbon and glued it on with my wood glue. Then I glued on about 40 pom-poms, 10 to each side. Do use hot glue for the pom-poms. I didn't, but if I had to do it all over again, I most definitely would because the PVA glue or the wood glue is just too slow. Um, you need something instant, so definitely use hot glue for the pom-poms. The only things I had to pay for for this DIY were the pom-poms because all the rest of the stuff I had, um, you know, half of it was trash anyway. So, you know, it didn't cost me really anything to make this. I think this puff looks really fantastic considering it's only made of paper. It also looks very realistic. It's the first time I've ever made one of these, so I can't say how long it will last. You can use a sealer or of your choice for extra protection if you prefer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm off now and I'm gonna go and put my feet up. So, thanks for watching. Till the next one, bye.